All right, welcome back to another episode of Shifting School. So excited to be here once again with my good friend and co-host, Trisha Friedman. Trisha, how are you today? Well, Jeff, today we are getting to speak with a librarian. You know how hard I geek out on all things reading. <laughs> so it's like I just had 25 espressos right after each other. Very exciting. I know. I, 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 was, I was debating whether or not just to let you do this episode by <laughs> yourself because you don't really need me when you're talking to a librarian. This is, I know, you just, you, you love this. You love uh, you, being able to just geek out about books. It's calm. the ELA in you and you're just such a, an avid reader in everything that you do. So uh, it's great. Why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about our guest today? So today's amazing guest is Ali Cornijo, who is a high school librarian, lead librarian in Texas. She also just happens to be the chair of the TLA Public Relations and Marketing Committee. And her love for libraries continues because she is also the chair for the TASL Legislative and Advocacy Committee and she co-hosts the Libraries Transform Texas podcast. We get into that on our show. She's an enthusiast of young adult lit and graphic novels and can often be found reading them late into the night with her book light. Listeners, we are also going to link to her social media profiles because we get into um, what she's doing with them. And Jeff, I, I know that you want to speak a little bit more about that. Yeah, I uh, um, I go on a little bit of a rant here when you listen to this. Make sure you listen all the way to the end as I get a little ranty about this just idea of using social media and inviting student culture into our classroom. I mean, we talk about that a lot on this podcast of how are we inviting student culture into our classroom? And I know we have an engagement problem. And every time there's an engagement problem and I'm hearing schools and teachers talk about engagement, one of the first questions I'm asking is, where are you? inviting student culture into your classroom. And I think one of the things that Ali, if you just listen to this episode with the question of how is she inviting student culture into her library, you hear it come through again and again and again in the success that she's having in getting kids in reading and checking out books and everything else her library does. She's got a maker space and laser cutters and, and she's doing all kinds of incredible stuff. But for me, I, I think that was the big takeaway is she is a librarian who is heavily involved in things and she knows how to get kids excited uh, about reading and invites that culture into her, into her classroom. So yes, or into her library. So yes, please do follow her on social media because I think you can learn a lot um, from how she's doing this with uh, engaging kids today. And if you are not a librarian, um, this episode is also for you because she's really talking about how all different teachers can interact with libraries. You know, if you teach civics, you want to talk about an incredible, really uh, hyper contextual unit to think about doing, learn about how your students can advocate for their local library. Speak with your local librarians about the, you know, the work that they do for the community and why it needs support. If you're an ELA lit teacher, we've got some activities to consider taking on that we talk about in this episode. Um, and, and again, Ali reminds us that libraries are about more than just books. They really are about fostering community. So if you're an educator, we know that interest interests you. Uh, we've got a great conversation on board for you today. Yeah, it's, it's great. You're going to love this one. Uh, just all about libraries, books, getting ready for summer as it is now uh, June. Uh, so just a, a great episode here where we get to, to geek out about a librarian. And again, thinking about all those ways that we can bring student culture into our classroom. All right. And with that, here is Allie, a high school librarian, lead librarian in Texas. Again, she's involved in all kinds of things with libraries. You're going to enjoy this one and be listening for those book recommendations all around young adult and novel books uh, for, your, for you, your kids, and your students this summer. This is a great one. And with that, on with the show. <laughs> Allie, we are so excited to have you on today. Uh, you are a fellow podcaster. Listeners will be sure to link to it in the show notes. Your podcast, Libraries Transform Texas, speaks across a section of different types of libraries, public libraries, school libraries, university libraries. For our listeners who want to do more to support any of those libraries or all of them, that maybe is a great summer challenge, 
What are a few things that you think are timely for us as educators uh, to consider doing over the summer for our libraries and our librarian friends? Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. This is very exciting for me. Anytime that I get to promote libraries or talk about them, I'm just so thankful and grateful for the opportunity. So thank you so much. Um, yes, thank you so much for mentioning the podcast that um, I co-host. It's the Tex Libraries Transform Texas podcast. And it's really special to me because it celebrates Texas libraries and librarians. And hopefully it serves as a resource for professionals in the library space who would like to hear about some best practices from across the state. And uh, we've had a lot of great contributors from authors to librarians who have crossed over from uh, different sectors of the libraries, like from university to public libraries and from school libraries to uh, special academic libraries. Um, it's just covered a wide range of topics and there's a little something for everyone. But as far as supporting libraries, there's so much you could do. But the best place to start is simply be a patron. Sign up for a library card at your local library. Um, ask for a calendar of events. You can show your support by uh, attending these events. And they usually have things like book clubs, author readings, workshops like arts and crafts or 3D printing or even laser cutting. Um, they offer free services like to help with your taxes. Um, they have huge e free ebook collection databases that you can just download to your Kindle. And you don't have to spend a thing. Some of them have cooking demos. I mean, it's, it's really extraordinary what you can get from your public library and libraries are the great equalizer, you know? So just simply by participating in these activities at your public library, uh, attending, it helps foster this sense of community and it reinforces how valuable our libraries are. And once you do that, once you have your great experience, because I promise you, you will, um, I think sharing that on social media is the next best step that you can take. Uh, once you're a true b library believer, um, share it on social media because there's nothing like a personal testimonial to get people to care about something. So when you share your positive stories and experiences, it's such a huge help. Um, hashtags are also fun. You know, it helps get the message out to a wider audience. So some of the hashtags that you could use are like hashtag library love or hashtag library advocacy. Um, and then public libraries will definitely have a hashtag that they like to use on their own. And if they don't, you should. <laughs> um, social media is also a great way to amplify just all the wonderful things that is happening in libraries. So we really hope that these personal testimonials, that they gain traction within the community. And, you know, once you do that, you're, you're naturally becoming this library advocate. And so, if you really want to be a true library advocate and you want to go beyond just being a patron, you know, sub submitting opinion pieces to uh, local newspapers, magazines, uh, different publications, and just, you know, do these op-eds supporting your library and, and expressing the enjoyment that uh, you take from at attending these events at your library and express your support for libraries and the impact that they have on the community, on education, on literacy, um, and how they help us just be lifelong learners. Um, and you can also join this grassroots coalition called Texans for the Right to Read. Uh, you can look at that at uh, texansfortherighttoread.com. And they are an amazing group. They're made up of regular Texas residents uh, who support the right to read and intellectual freedom. So um, if you do sign up on their website, it's free and you get newsletters with current news about libraries and actions that you can take to support libraries. Um, you can also attend community meetings where they're talking about library related topics that are being discussed, school board meetings, town halls. Uh, these are all great opportunities to voice your support for libraries and engage in constructive conversations. Um, and you might get to speak with policymakers and community leaders and really, you know, make a change. Um, the best thing is stay informed. 
just stay informed about what's going on in the library community. We're uh, a hot topic in legislatures, if you haven't heard. <laughs> so just educating yourself about the challenges and the issues that are facing libraries right now in your community. Uh, this just enables us to speak intelligently and knowledgeably to, to what's going on. And we appreciate any support and advocacy we can get. Yeah, I feel like there's a whole civics curriculum that could be almost interwoven with the idea of advocating for libraries of, as you said, yeah. you know, lots of public libraries, you can attend their board meeting virtually now. Um, and I, I love that you brought up the social media piece because I follow a number of libraries. I follow my own local library system that's in Ottawa. But Jeff, I also follow the Seattle library, like connecting with you that way. I follow the Brooklyn Public Library, uh, a bunch of others. And A, it's a great way to stay informed of just like book recommendations at the bare minimum. But as you were saying, Ali, all of the uh, nation global issues around making sure, I love that you refer to it as the great equalizer, that libraries the world over are being supported and that we're seeing different ways libraries are connecting with their community. Um, my local library now has started sort of um, doing a lot of gardening uh, awareness piece okay. and how to really create a sustainable garden, um, which has been really cool. And and again, like that's a, a new thing that I haven't necessarily experienced with a library before. So if you have an account of a, a library, I know of course you've got to like big up Texas, but if there's another public library system that you think does a great job on social media, um, let us know, we'll leave it in the show notes. The ones I mentioned, listeners, I'll put in the show notes as well, because whoever's doing their social media, give them a raise. They're doing a wonderful, wonderful job. <laughs> The thing I love yeah. is, you know, I did this, my wife reads all the time and she has a Kindle, but the, just that, you, you know, one of the biggest issues is going to the library to get a book and then having to remember to return the book. But now with all of these digital checkouts right to your Kindle for holidays, I'm thinking as summer is coming, you know, and if your kids have a Kindle and just all you need is the Kindle app, you don't even need the Kindle, just Kindle on your phone. You just have to have a Kindle app. You could be checking out books. Uh, all summer long without having to worry about returning the books. Like they're just on your Kindle. Exactly. Uh, you can check them out and read them. <laughs> and as we talk about that, this idea are about summer, um, you are a self-proclaimed uh, admirer of young adult and graphic novels. Can you give us maybe a few recommendations for this summer's read? Uh, what, what what are some of the good, the good things out there in uh, young adult uh, fiction at the moment? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, one of my favorite formats to read are graphic novels. And there's just mm. a wonderful graphic novel out there called Miss Quinces by uh, Kat Guajardo. And this particular uh, graphic novel follows uh, the main character. Um, I forgot her name. Oh, my gosh, I forgot her name. But the main character is a she loves to draw comics. She loves to hang out with her friends. But she has a very protective family. And um, they want to throw her a quinceanera. Uh, her mm -hmm. family is from Honduras. And for the summer, they take a trip to Honduras. And a quinceanera is, in case uh, people don't know, a quinceanera is, is a big celebration around one's 15th birthday. And it's sort of like you're coming out to society, uh, debutante, you're introduced, and you're, you're now an adult amongst adults, right? So um, in, in, a, in a Hispanic heritage, a big party is, is planned and a big dance and a choreographed dance with all of these um, participants and lots of food, <laughs> lots of celebrating. And these things run all hours of the night, but they are, they're a blast and a huge part of my community in South Texas. But um, in this particular graphic novel, the main character is just not about that life. Uh, she would rather be drawing her comics. She wants to be listening to her music. Uh, she just doesn't like the attention on her. And of course, she does not want to wear a big dress. Um, so when she goes to Honduras for the summer, her family just springs it on her that they are going to throw her a quinceanera there in Honduras with her family. Family. And uh, she does not want to do that, but she really wants to go to a summer camp with her friends. So she negotiates with her mom. Uh, if you let me go to the summer camp, I'll do your quinceanera. 
right? <laughs> and so uh, the whole process of buying her big dress, of planning the music, the party favors, uh, that coupled with sharing the experiences with her her very ill grandmother and sharing these family traditions, uh, it just makes it such a great laugh out loud book that really makes you appreciate family. So I loved this book and I recommend awesome. it to any uh, reader who loves young adult. Um, another book that I recently read that I just thought was out of this world is one from one of my favorite authors, Tiffany Jackson. She likes to read a lot of mystery, thriller, horror uh, books. And um, this one is sort of like a retelling of Carrie by Stephen King. And uh, it's, it's set in Georgia. And this young girl, Maddie, um, she she's running around it starts off with her running on the school track field and it's about to rain and she's terrified she's thinking in her head i know i checked the weather this morning it wasn't supposed to rain but it's good but it starts to rain it falls on her head and then her her hair starts to frizz and she has been hiding the fact that she's an african-american young girl and uh this is telling to her friends and so mm -hmm. she is just paranoid about it and and it and sort of has, there's some trigger warnings, you know, because she has a very controlling father, uh, borderline uh, abusive, you know, doesn't speak to her very well. Um, but he wants to hide this part about her. And now this situation has created just a really horrible um, reality for her because pe they're starting to make fun of her. They're starting to bully her, uh, telling her that she was trying to hide this part of herself uh, when really she didn't really want to, it was all her father. And so um, it sort of follows that Carrie um, storyline where uh, she does make a friend who tries to help her and uh, that friend's boyfriend asks her to the prom to make her feel more welcome in the community. And then things just kind of take a nosedive. Um, but it really brings to light a lot of issues that are happening in her community. Um, Tiffany Jackson is just an amazing writer of horror and she put some really scary parts into here because Maddie also has these telekinetic uh, powers and she freaks out her classmates in really interesting ways. And it's just a really, really great book that I got through in one day and I recommend it to anybody. It's called The Weight of Blood by Tiffany Jackson and it's fantastic. Um, another one that I read recently is called Indivisible by Daniel Aleman and this one follows Mateo who is the main character and um, he and his family Actually, he's he's an American citizen, but his family is undocumented and they live in New York City and they they own a bodega and he's really into the arts. He's really into his theater troupe. Uh, he wants to be an actor. He wants to attend not Juilliard, but there's another one that the Tisch School at NYU and um you know, he has this great thing going. It's his senior year. He's waiting for college acceptances, but then um, ice comes knocking on the doors of the bodega. And unfortunately, his parents are taken and he is left with his little sister and they are alone in their apartment. He has to fend for her. He doesn't know what the next steps are. Does he have to contact an immigration lawyer? Um, eventually, you know, his uncle watches out for him. But it's just all of the nightmares that come with that sort of reality when one day your family is gone. Um, but you get to stay because you're an American, but what's mm. what's life if your family's not there, right? So um, it, it just tells a really important story that is not, um, it's, it's not fiction, you know, it's, it's reality for a lot of people. So um, this was just a fantastic story that I had to have a box of Kleenex with at the at the very end but it's just fantastic and i recommend it to anybody that's indivisible by daniel aleman thank you and so those are some those are some great reads that i recommend those are great recommendations and you have me thinking about how again i jeff you've heard me go on my soapbox for this again and again that i i really think that ya books books that are really popular with your students 
these are great texts for professional development, I think. Um, you know, we, we talk a lot about like the teen or the preteen experience. And I think there is such a great conversation to be had if you are a middle or high school teacher. I know that often our book clubs are around PD books, but I love the idea of doing a book group for teachers that, again, focuses on the teenage perspective, as you were saying, Ali, related to topics that they care about that affect them, that affect their friends mm. and their family. Um, and of course, like I'm an avid reader and I find it sometimes difficult to keep up with like, you know, the best books coming or the new season of books coming. I subscribe to Book Riot. They've got a great newsletter. And you were mentioning before, like social media can be really helpful for, for this. Uh, and I, I, I intentionally follow librarians like yourself because you're always doing a great job of documenting what you're reading. And you were mentioning hashtags. There's great hashtags. I knew of hashtag, I, I call it I, I'm Wire. It's I M W A R A. <laughs> at HR. It's, I, it's Monday. What are you reading? I love following that. But you taught me all about hashtag what are you reading Wednesday? So I am looking forward to using that. <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit more about the ways as a librarian that you see social media being leveraged to celebrate literacy? Sure. Um, I think today social media platforms deserve a lot of credit for hyping up these literacy celebrations. Um, it's really great to see how it's effectively promoting this culture of reading. And um, I, I'm just so excited to be a part of it. I really am. Uh, like you said, I love doing the What Are You Reading Wednesdays? And um, I'm usually just trying to shout from the mountaintops about what I'm reading and hopefully anybody will listen. And so this just <laughs> gives me the great platform to uh, put out there. It's a great outlet for me to put out what I'm reading. So sometimes I'll do a quick TikTok video discussing what I'm, what I'm reading and I'll share it out to all the, the socials like Insta and Twitter and Facebook. Um, um, and then sometimes I'll, I'll use Canva. I know we all love Canva. Um, I'll use Canva to whip up a, a really quick graphic uh, to, to put out what I'm reading. Or sometimes I'll just do a screenshot of the Audible book that I'm reading and put that on social media. You know, there's just so many things that one can do to promote that culture of reading. And I really have to give it up to hashtag book talk on TikTok. Mm. This has done so much for promoting reading in libraries amongst patrons and my students. Um, there, once book talk became this huge thing, and this has happened in the last few years, um, I get so many students coming into the library asking, I saw this book on TikTok. Do you have it? You've got to have it. And if you don't, you need to order it. And that is just <laughs> so exciting as a, as a librarian to see these yeah. students coming into the library uh, asking for certain books. So um, this and this also in turn has pushed us to create these big elaborate library displays that are based about <laughs> around these book talk books. So uh, it's, I just had one recently that said books that you've seen on TikTok or something to that effect. And then I had all, all, the, all of them on display and they were gone just like that. Wow. So um, that has been really great. If you don't follow hashtag book talk on TikTok, uh, please do. It is great. Another one, another hashtag to follow on Instagram would be bookstagram hashtag bookstagram and those are really great on twitter you can do hashtag book twitter um and just tons of great recommendations if you have that oh, i don't know what to read next you got to just follow those hashtags and you'll get an abundance of recommendations um there's also some really great virtual book clubs that you can find online uh reese witherspoon has a really great book club i think it's called the hello sunshine book club and um Jenna Bush just came out with a book club. I, she's one of the co-anchors on, I think it's Good Morning America. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, Jenna Bush, she just introduced her, uh, her new pick, her new selection for her book club, which is um, Warrior Girl Unearthed by Angeline Bully. And that particular author wrote Firekeeper's Daughter, which was a huge YA hit. And so I'm really excited by that selection pick by Jenna Bush's book club. Um, and then uh, another thing that's a thing is BookTube. 
So if you go on YouTube and just type in booktube or book recommendations, you'll find some really great vloggers that will give some wonderful recommendations for whatever you're looking for. And uh, that's how I spend my Saturday mornings. I spend it on YouTube looking at booktube and I have some favorite uh, booktubers like Haley and Bookland and uh, Jesse the Reader. And they just have some really great recommendations and they talk about what they intend to read what they read that was great, what they read that's not so great. Um, and, you know, talking about literacy and social media, I follow a lot of my favorite authors on Twitter. And Twitter has just done such an amazing job to connect the reader and author. Because I've you know, I've done a lot of What Are You Reading Wednesdays um, when I'm just superbly in love with a book. I, I have to shout it out on Twitter. And I've received lots of retweets from authors. I've received lots of comments from authors. Um, and when will you be able to do that uh, anywhere else? I mean, it's just a great platform that has been able to, I've been able to make those connections with authors, the the heroes and rock stars in my life. Um, so social media has just done just an amazing job of promoting a culture of reading and celebrating uh, books. Uh, there's also like national holidays, like um, World Read Aloud Day and celebrate a book day. And th they're around all year long. And I just recommend that your, your listeners watch out for these great reading holidays on Twitter or Instagram. And don't miss the opportunity to take a snapshot of what you're reading and, and tell the world about it because it just adds to the positivity of reading. All right. I want to ask you a bunch of questions about everything you just said. First question, <laughs> how important is it for librarians today to be on social media? I think it's an incredible, incredibly important thing. Um, I don't I don't think it's bad if they don't partake in social media because mm -hmm. um, it's it's someone's choice. It's someone's own personal choice and, and you're you're putting yourself on blast, right? You're 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 really making yourself vulnerable when you go on to social media. However, the benefits of it while I don't judge anybody for not doing it, the benefits of being on social media is incredibly important because at this moment, librarians in libraries are getting their story um, misinterpreted or their story mm. is being told by other people who really don't know the whole story about what's going on in libraries. They're sort of uh, hijacking the, the narrative and I think social media is such an important way to take back that narrative and tell the world about the wonderful things that we do for our patrons. It's it's not only books, you know, there's like I was mentioning earlier about public libraries, but in my own school library, I engage in a lot of maker spaces. I do stop motion animation. I do a lot of green screen. I do arts and crafts. We do painting. We do a, a Harry Potter crafternoon. Um, we <laughs> like to, <laughs> it's, it's a blast. Um, I can only imagine. I've just put in an order for a, a laser cutter to do engraving. I have two 3D printers. I mean, we are purchasing this technology for our patrons that would never be exposed to these technologies had it not been for the library. And so now my students can graduate from my school having been exposed to technology such as 3D printing, being able to bring their learning to life, hands-on learning. I work at a specialty school for medical professionals and um, they've been able to 3D print hearts, lungs, inner ears, and to hold that model in your hands, you know, it just brings a whole new dimension to the learning. Um, they'll be exposed to this laser cutter now. And um, I, I don't have a plan for it just yet, but we're gonna have a plan and we're gonna have a blast with it. Um, mm -hmm. There's just so many great things that do happen. I have book clubs. I have a battle of the books team where they compete with other teams across our district in our region with books that they've read and they, they kind of do like a Jeopardy round with these books. Um, it's There's a lot to what we do and so when I take that picture of my students smiling, enjoying uh, the, uh, holding a model that they've just 3D printed, 
or uh, talking in camera that I'm holding up of a book they've just absolutely loved and they need to tell the world. And I post that on social media. It, that's the narrative I want being told. And uh, people are listening. People will respond to that. Like I said, these personal testimonials are the most powerful thing we can do. So if you're a librarian, I do highly recommend that you promote your library, promote the wonderful things that you're doing in your library. Don't let anybody take that narrative away from you. Um, well, and, and I there's think there's two sides. Yeah, there's two sides to that too, right? Like you said, and, and I agree with you, you can't force anybody to use social media, but there's two sides to it. And, and this is what I'm hearing from you. There's the side like promote your library, use social media to do that. But if you're not going to, and that's not you, and you don't want to do that, you still need to understand what the book talks are happening on TikTok because if your patrons are kids and you're wondering why kids aren't coming to the library, it's because you're not relevant, right? How do we invite student culture? We talk about this all the time on the podcast. How are we inviting student culture into our classroom? And when you have a display of books that you know is blowing up on TikTok, kids come to the library. Exactly. When you have a display of books that are blowing up on Instagram, it makes you relevant. And all you have to do is as seen on TikTok and kids are going to be like, this is cool. They get us. But if we're just doing the same library that we've been doing forever, and then we just sit here and complain of, well, why aren't kids coming to the library? It's because there is this gap now between how they are finding out about books and how my generation found out about books. We didn't have TikTok, right? And so mm -hmm. even if you're not using social media to promote your library, which you should, but if that's not for you, I really hope that you're there so that you understand what kids are being exposed to, what books are relevant to them, where they, why they're going to come to your library. And I think that part of it gets lost so often that we only ever think about, oh, well, I don't, I don't want to be like Ali and be on TikTok. Well, then don't. <laughs> but follow the hashtags and know what books to bring into your library so kids want to come. So you know how to set up the displays. Well, you know, Jeff. To me, that, that is more powerful than, than even the other part. And I have the perfect anecdote that kind of merges together what both of you are saying. And Ali, I think you'll appreciate this because this comes from a, another fellow Texan librarian. Karina Kilantan was on the show uh, a few months back. And she was talking about how she launched eSports in her library and, you know, was talking about grant writing. And I had a listener reach out and say, you know, I heard that. I learned something. I've done some more. And, and she described it as lurking on social media. She's like, you know, I have one of those like avatar 1099. It looks like a bot. Yeah, account. that's all you need. <laughs> um, <laughs> just and she's like, and I just was lurking and learned a lot more both about esports in libraries and about potential grants for librarians. And so I love, you know, Karina inspiring somebody that she'll never meet in real life. And this other person, again, doing as you said, Jeff, like, yes, I completely agree with you, Ali, like sometimes sharing, it's tough. You know, we, we yeah. don't all experience the same sort of like likes and positive comments out there. That's a reality. Um, but that lurking is really powerful. And, you know, to your point about the book talk library displays, there's a big box bookstore that's close to me. And every time I'm there, it's their first display as seen on TikTok. And the number of oh, times wow. I just see a teen taking a photo of that display <laughs> and then leaving because they're going to see like, hey, is my library have these books, which... Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, support support your local library. Uh, but that That's display, great. like the number of teens that are always hovering and just grabbing a photo of it. And Ali, that was my next question. And let, I would love to focus on TikTok. In your TikTok, do you have a lot of students that follow you or kids that reach out or, or are, you know, finding books that you have in the library through your TikTok? Because I just right now I know TikTok is especially high school, middle school, high school kids. It is the thing. Um, can you kind of talk about like, even how is that done for your presence? Do you have kids that come to you like, I saw you talk about this book on TikTok and now I want to come check it out. Does that happen? 
Well, I have a library TikTok and then I have my personal slash professional okay. uh, TikTok. So my personal slash professional one would cater more to my PLN, my sure. professional learning network. So for other librarians to learn about what I'm doing in the library and hopefully sharing those best practices out to them. But um, but I do try to add a little sass and a little fun yeah. to those TikToks. <laughs> as the best I'm trying, I'm trying to anyway, I, I don't know if I'm doing it right, but um, I'm just having fun out no, there. No, they're doing it right on TikTok. That's the best part about TikTok. <laughs> And then the library TikTok, um, that is more student led. So I'll mm -hmm. do some TikToks promoting the library displays that I have in the library. And uh, some will be book talks and some will be uh, summer reading recommendations. And I'll also have the students create a TikTok um, cool. recommending books, you know, so I just tell them please film responsibly, no profanity, yeah. don't uh, do anything to get me in trouble, you know, follow your digital citizenship learnings, you know, so digital citizenship is a huge part of the library. So we do try to teach how to responsibly post, how to think before you post, how to uh, watch what you say, because it's going to leave a digital footprint forever. And so I think having them do student-led TikToks um, really allow them to demonstrate what they've learned as far as digital citizenship and practice and, it uh, yeah they show they they know how to navigate it responsibly and yeah. that's all i can hope for and at the same time they're promoting literacy they're promoting reading um and yeah we have we have quite a few followers with our library TikTok, and and it, it's they they have a blast watching their peers you know make a silly TikTok, and then they get curious about the book and that's all i can hope for and that's a great way to you know if you're a lit or an ela teacher i think it's a great way to reach out to potential authors. You know, I, I love that you brought up before that connection. Um, and one of like my biggest like book Twitter viral moments, um, I my students were doing annotation work of a Margaret Atwood text. Uh, and, you know, we were color coding really explicit like annotation lesson. And I was taking photos just of the student work and tweeted them out tagged her and she responded and like that happened after school and when I came in the next day like my whole uh lit department everyone was like my goodness I cannot believe that just happened um and you brought up Canva <laughs> yeah. before you know there's great templates there so I feel like yeah there's a fun design lesson to be had and even if your students are creating them and not necessarily sharing them you can still within your class let's take a look at them as text types um, because, yeah. you know, we talk about writing for audience. There's a great discussion to be had, even if they're not shared publicly. But, you know, I, I know there will be teachers listening who will be thinking, you know, we're, my school won't let me do that. Or we've got, you know, some policies in place where that's not possible. Create the videos, share them just within your class or across classes or the school as well. It's another uh, just option in case people have that as a parameter. That's what we did at my last school, Trisha. I don't know if you ever knew what we did. That This was like one of my coolest projects I was ever when I was a tech coach. We actually had students making book talks about books for the live for the school library. And we were we would just hold the we would host the video in Google Drive. I mean, we're not talking anything complicated here, but then we created QR codes and we put QR codes in the back of the book. So as kids are walking around the library, you open up the back of the book and you could scan a QR code and up pops the video of another kid in the mm -hmm. school saying, hey, I just finished reading this book. Here's what I liked about it. Here's who this book should be for. Let me know if you checked it out too. And we started, we had QR codes for so many books. You, oh, and you could do the same thing with your TikTok video. Just make a QR code that goes directly to the TikTok video. Yeah. It was so That's cool. Awesome. I mean, just QR codes everywhere. And kids are just scanning them, you know, with their phone. They're walking through and being like, oh, somebody's read this already and left a review of the book in a video format. Oh, man, yeah. it was awesome. And that was 15 so years ago, by the way. We're talking <laughs> TikTok before it was TikTok. Love it. So easy. So much fun. Well, thank yeah. you so much for, for sharing, you know, and, and I, I think this really does set us up for hopefully a great summer of reading. I want to kind of leave you with one final question because Jeff and I also talk a lot about the power of fiction podcasts 
Um, you know, we were very fortunate back earlier in the academic year to have spoken to two people behind uh, Solar, the podcast that won numerous awards in 2022 um, about their work. That was a fiction podcast for more of an adult audience, but there are so many great fiction podcasts that are out there now uh, for, for young readers. And we very much feel that, you know, that that is a form of, of reading and is a great way to, you've got a road trip um, or you want to kind of have a shared reading experience, they're free, right? So from that standpoint, that's really powerful. I know you mentioned Audible. Um, so I don't know if you have any thoughts on fiction podcasts or uh, if you want to just talk about a, an Audible book that you are enjoying, but we, we'd love to know if you've got any fiction podcasts that you would love to recommend as well. My gosh, I don't have any fiction podcasts that I listen to, um, but I know that I am a huge listener of National Ge Geographic's Greeking Out. Um, mm -hmm. This is something that my kids really love, and I've always been a huge Greek mythology fan. So this particular podcast has episodes dedicated to a particular Greek myth story, and um, it's it's aimed towards a younger audience, like perhaps middle grade, but it's fun for the entire family. I absolutely love it. If anybody likes stories like uh, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, um, anything by Rick Riordan, they would be a huge fan of National Geographic's Greeking Out. Um, it's really great. And then, and then I listen to other podcasts that are not for young listeners or more for adults. Um, like my favorite one is Smartless. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's it's so good. And they have some such great guests on that particular podcast. It's just amazing who they can get for that particular one. Um, but uh, there's just lots of podcasts out there that are so great. But I have yet to make that that uh, switch to fiction podcast. So I need to do that. Uh, but as far as Audible, there are so many great uh, audiobooks out there. And the one that I'm reading right now is, or listening to rather, um, is it's called How Moon Fuentes Fell in Love. And this particular book, I can't remember who wrote it. I'm so sorry that I can't remember the author. Um, but this particular book show is a, um, is on many reading lists that were, um, uh, released by the Texas Library Association. They they have a lot of reading lists that they put out that are uh, vetted. These books are vetted by committees and they're put together over a year long process of reading the books, rating these books within committee, vetting them. And uh, this one that I'm reading, How Moon Fuentes Fell in Love. Um, this one came out on one of those reading lists and that's what I'm listening mm -hmm. to right now. Um, I just love listening to, to books and whoever thinks that listening to books is not reading, you are very mistaken. There are so many benefits to it, um, especially just growing your vocabulary, hearing those words that you've always read, but you don't know how they're pronounced. Um, that has happened so many times when I'm listening to my audiobooks. So I highly recommend that if you're not a big reader, um, especially for our students who may be reluctant readers or they're dyslexic students, um, Audible, uh, these audiobooks, and I think Audiobook Sync it's a it's a company. They put out free audiobooks over the summer for our students. Uh, th there's just so many great opportunities to get these audiobooks free of charge, um, and I highly recommend them to anybody. Yeah, awesome. I'm a big Audible Audible person. I've got more credits than I I can never spend all my credits fast enough. I'm me neither. So good, and I, I'm I'm exactly that, Ali. I'm dyslexic, and so reading for me ends up being a lot of listening to books. Trisha yeah. knows this. Trisha always sends me the Audible link instead of the actual book link. <laughs> so I listen. So well, I'm that well, person that goes through their credits too quickly. So I think I have envy of your extra credit, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> They roll over, and if you run out of your credits, you get a discounted price if you purchase an audiobook. But uh, with Audible, they they give you a little sample, uh, um, an Audible yeah. sample, a little reading. I don't know how long they are, but it's not that long. But sometimes I'll link a QR code to that little sample oh, that they idea. offer on Audible, and I'll put it on a book. So in case they want, oh, that's a great idea. I like that idea. That's a great. That's a great idea. 
Well, thank you so much uh, for spending time with us. Uh, I feel like we could continue to talk about this all day. And I know uh, between you and Trisha, I wouldn't even have to be here. Uh, the two of you could just geek out on every book that you've read in the past 48 hours. And it'll be more than I've read in years, I'm sure. So uh, but thank you for thank you for being here. Absolutely. My pleasure.